Hey now, what's up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I am continuing my Star Wars The Original Trilogy reviews. In fact, I'm at the end of the original trilogy. Star Wars, this is of course the complete edition. But I am talking about Star Wars Return of the Jedi. This is episode 6. It came out in 1983. It was written by Lawrence Kasdan and George Lucas, but it was directed by Richard McQuad. And the plot is, we see at the very beginning, Han Solo is still frozen in carbonite. He's held captive by Jabba the Hutt, so the whole group has to go in there and try to save him. But after that, they still have to deal with the Empire. They still have to deal with Lord Vader, who is being led by the Emperor, and they want to just take over the galaxy. So they have to, for once and for all, face them and stop them. Now, what I think of Return of the Jedi is... I enjoy this movie. I do. I know some people look at Return of the Jedi and they'll say that either it's a bad movie or they'll say that it's the weakest out of the original trilogy. You know what? I guess that's one statement I can agree is that out of the original trilogy, the original movies, this is the weakest. But that's that's not saying a whole lot of bad about it, I think. I still think that there are some good things in here, some good moments in here. Like let's talk about the beginning. Holy crap, this beginning where we see Jabba the Hutt, Jabba's palace. And if you were watching the original cut of the original movies without the newly edited or added stuff in there, this would be our first time meeting Jabba the Hutt. He has been talked about in the first two movies, name dropped and just mentioned about how uh, scary he is and how much money that Han Solo owes him. So seeing him like in the flash... And this big bulbous alien who is just almost like a crime lord of Tatooine. And, and he has his gang of aliens. He has other aliens chained up and, and almost enslaved. And he has on full display for everybody to watch and almost laugh at. And just, it's, it's a very weird scene going on. It is. There's a part of me that watches this and says, what the hell are we doing? This is especially the moments where it's there's like a concert going on and there's like an alien band and an alien singer and they're all partying. But there's another part of me that thinks it's kind of fun and it's kind of goofy. So let's go with it. I love when Princess Leia has, herself goes in there, tries to go undercover to help Han and sneak him out. But she too gets captured and that's where we get Slave Leia. And some people might say, well, Slave Leia, like, this is a character who was very strong in the first two movies and very capable. And to see her almost degraded to the point where she's dressed like a slave, and I say dressed lightly, she's barely wearing anything, and she's just chained up by Jabba, looking like she just got done doing God knows what to the guy. It's creepy, it's sick. In, in those ways, but I will say that Carrie Fisher has never looked hotter then the slave Leia just hold, like I know it's it's weird and it's even weird that I'm saying that but it doesn't make it any less true and at least at least she got her moment of killing Jabba the Hutt like at least they gave that to her the moment where she chokes him out with the chain it's badass and it brought her back to where she needed to be a Boba Fett I talked about in the last movie how Boba Fett was was here for just a couple of scenes and then everybody loved him this movie he's here at the very beginning just sort of standing around at least at least he does get in the action a little bit he uses his jetpack and flying around and doing some stuff but he gets killed he gets taken out very quickly very early and when i first saw this movie i could not believe that that was it i said out loud that was it that's it for boba fett he gets killed just like that, just falls into the pit and gets swallowed up by that creature. And everybody loves him? <laughs> okay, I guess we'll go with that. But when people talk about Return of the Jedi, they almost always only talk about Ewoks. Especially people who don't like this movie, you ask them why and they say, Ewoks, that's why. 
And I get it, I do. It's almost like if you say Ewoks, I can't really come up with anything to defend it. It is very silly, it is very kiddish. It's probably the most kiddish thing that Star Wars, at least in the original movies, have done. It's weird. It is very weird that just a bunch of little furry people running around and and uh, there's a part of me that thinks that they're cute. There's a part of me that thinks that, oh, come on, you have to like these little guys. But they're also a-holes. I mean, when you first meet them, they, all, they try to take, and they do take capture our crew. They do try to burn alive and eat Han Solo and just everybody. Sure, they think that C-3PO is a god, but that almost doesn't do anything for trying to eat them but the moment where they do come in they do help them out and and, and they fight off the stormtroopers especially when one of them gets killed and the other ewok is reacting to his dead buddy on the ground and and it's a sad moment it really is so that's when i really come around on them that's where you really go like all right i do like these little guys obviously our original group is here r2d2 c3po chewbacca i mean i love chewbacca's relationship with han solo and how constantly like just the way how whenever chewbacca talks nobody knows what the hell he's saying but han instantly gets it they go back and forth just a great dynamic great relationship landau calrissian billy d williams i know in in the empire movie he he does turn on han in some ways uh vader doesn't really give him much choice and he, and he has to double cross them and it doesn't look good when the only black guy in these movies double crosses our main characters, but he makes up for it and then some here. He is with the rebels now. He does make up for that, become a general and fly the Millennium Falcon into battle. So again, I like that they redeemed him. It's awesome to see Luke Skywalker now as a Jedi Knight, essentially. He's pretty much there. He looks badass when you first see him at the beginning and he has the robe and the hood on and he's clearly at his most powerful. I love when he goes to visit Yoda thinking he needs more training. And even Yoda's like, no, you're ready, dude. You are ready. It's kind of sad to see Yoda die just because it's, he's such a likable character. He's such an interesting character and to see him die, it's like, oh no. But Yoda's reaction to dying Yoda just kind of having a nonchalant like, yeah, I'm just going to go die now. It's no big deal. Like to Jedis, they're okay with death because death isn't the end for them. Death just means that they become even more powerful. It's almost something that they welcome more than anything else. So that's cool. You get your first real good look at the Emperor. Full on, he shows up at the base because they're rebuilding the Death Star, at least a bigger version of the Death Star. And I know it's kind of silly, right? Like their plan is just to build the same thing, but bigger. But I'm okay with it. It in some ways makes sense, but in other ways you almost wonder why would they build the same core in the middle that leads to it blowing up once again. Hey, whoever said that the empire were the smartest group in the world now vader vader darth vader goes through such an arc here you got layers and depths to him in the last movie but this is where luke is trying to save him luke is convinced that vader is not completely in the dark side or that he can bring him out of that dark side and that's fascinating because you're honestly watching this and you're not too sure you're almost thinking that luke is wrong and that vader is too far gone but you love that Luke does try and you love that even though they have a pretty cool lightsaber battle, I do think the saber battle in the, in the second movie Empire is better, but this one is more personal. It is more of them talking and, and, and Luke trying to put him down. And then the Emperor is very evil, very much like, yes, yes, give in to anger. And it's just, it's creepy. He looks creepy. He, uh, but watching Vader turn, watching Vader finally say enough, and he turns to the Emperor, picks him up over his head, throws him off and kills him. It's so satisfying. It's because you already like Vader just in general, just on principle. He looks cool and all this stuff and he it's cool to like the villain, but to see him turn good, to see that there was slight humanity in him is, is such a great payoff when he reveals himself and takes his helmet off just before he dies 
it's weird to see what Vader actually looks like. I almost like the mystery more. I honestly could have gone through all three movies without ever seeing what Vader looks like. Especially because when he takes the helmet off, he's not a black guy. <laughs> it's like, what? The end of the movie, you get the Ewok celebration, which I was comparing online the original song that the Ewoks sang and then the movie, the edited version of it. And it's kind of weird that they would change it. I don't really have a preference, but it's just, it's like weird. It's like, why would you change a song? It doesn't really make sense. I love, love the moment that Leia, when Leia tells Han that Luke is her brother, just the whole realization on Han's face, he has this look on his face like, what? Didn't you just kiss him in the last movie? It, like, I swear that's the look that, that Harrison Ford has. Uh, but he just, he goes with it. These two really feel like soulmates. It's kind of weird, the rumors that Harrison Ford actually wanted to die in this movie. Like his character, he wanted Han to die here. Could you imagine if, if they had killed Han Solo in this movie especially? Like that would have been very downbeat, very depressing. I'm kind of glad that we didn't get it in this movie, at least. Once again, I enjoy this film. I have fun with this film. It has some cool action. Like, I love the the chase scene that Leia and Luke have when they're on the pod racers and, and they're going against the stormtroopers. Just some really fun stuff here. I know it's not perfect. I know it's, it's silly at, at times, but still... I enjoy Return of the Jedi. So guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of Return of the Jedi. Do you enjoy it? Do you like it? Or do you think it's not that good? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!